Okay, here's a video by the Dark Conservator Conservatorian. Um, he's gonna say why he's not convinced of anarcho capitalism thus isn't an anarcho capitalist. So I'm gonna I'm gonna answer that question. Alright, here we go. What's up everybody? I'm on the drive home here from work today and I just uh, wanted to record this one question that I have for anarcho-capitalists. But first, a little bit of a rundown. I myself am a uh, conservative. I guess you could say a conservative libertarian more or less because I do believe in the freedom uh, from uh, drug prohibition, um, especially when it comes to marijuana. And good, good. Warning drugs is bullshit. You should be able to put whatever you want in your body. Especially of all things, marijuana, because it's it's safe. You don't you don't even have the argument for the war on drugs that it's protected as far as safety because marijuana is safe, and yet they ban it. All right, so let's go. And I'm open to cocaine and heroin and all the other drugs as well, but definitely. Yeah, cocaine. Snort that shit up. Yeah. Marijuana, and I'm pro gun rights and. Uh... Um, I'm for people to get married to whoever that they want to and all that other stuff And so I'm convinced on those aspects and of course I'm for private property rights That's one of the biggest issues that I'm most passionate about is private property rights So that's something that I can that I definitely agree with anarcho-capitalists on I guess you can say that I'm a bit more of the Austin Peterson uh, uh, philosophy of a minarchist I wouldn't exactly call Austin Peterson a, a minarchist because he's a Republican. I mean, he may be libertarian-ish, but he's just libertarian-ish since he's a Republican rather than, you know, a libertarian party. Libertarian, of course. I'm not for minarchy, I'm for anarchy, so yeah. Where government has some role to play in society, but definitely not into the interventionism of people's private property rights in their own personal lives. But I'm convinced of, but I'm convinced that government is essential to the preservation of people's rights. Like protect their, uh, like um, police and military and so forth. The police to prevent, to protect people uh, from criminals taking away their right to life and their right to property from getting stolen, you know? And preventing enemies overseas from invading and taking away their rights as well. Okay, well, you don't even need the government for that. You don't need, you don't need the government for that even because there's private police and private military. I mean, you don't, you literally don't need a government for anything even that. I mean, here we have, if you want to, like, uh, we just change tabs here, we have, uh, uh, hold on, CO security, okay, you have, um, yeah, you have this, uh, you know, bucket, we're going to have burglaries, robberies, we're going to have the, into our control center. Okay this, is, okay, this is a. Uh, okay, that's free. It's, it's a drop. Damn it! These fucking buttons. Damn it. Okay, here you have zero security solutions. That's private police. Uh, they're located in this one part of Houston. This one part of Houston, not the whole city, of course, but this one part of Houston, and they work great. They work uh, better than uh, regular police for that one part. Like um, here, I can show you uh, another video on them. Um, here, let me let me show you. Like, uh, I think this might be the one. There's like a there was like a news. It's, it's a okay, hold on. There's like a news special on them. Okay, here we go. It's crimes like that that have neighbors in Sharpstown looking for. We're looking for broke windows. We're looking for kicked-in door. He looks and sounds like a cop. At least it's quiet today. And he and his fellow officers are certainly armed like cops. Mm -hmm. With canines. When most people hear private security, what do they think? They they think um, mall cops. No mall cops here. They are security officers with SEAL security. 
and they've been under contract with the subdivision since November. We actually yeah, yeah, the subdivision. It's, it's just that part of Houston. All right. Control districts and subdivisions like this one uh, give them a little bit more security for their money. The Civic Association used to see. Did you hear that? More security for their money. They're getting more stuff with this than regular police. Like like more officers, more patrol time, or more you know under equipment or better equipped people. You get more of your money with private than public police. Contract with the constable's office for a deputy to patrol the area, but now that it's gone with seal security, it has anywhere from three to four officers patrolling the streets at any given time and at half the cost. Half the cost. Mm -hmm. Also cut in half. The number of burglaries, the average monthly number last year, at about 20 per month. And uh, in February, 11. Okay, that's that's a near 50 percent drop in burglaries. Okay, so we definitely can have private police. What about uh, the, the private private military? Private, yeah, the private military. What what about that? Um, okay. Okay, so so far it looks like they're being vilified. Uh, there's a John Stossel special on them. I don't know where it is. John Stossel. Maybe. Yeah, we'll just type in John Stossel. He, he had some good things to say. Forgot what the word. So we'll type it in and watch again. All right. There's my main man, John Stossel. He's not an ANCAP, but he's at least a MINCAP. So. And he exposes things that are considered bad. What? As really being good, so yeah. What's the best way to fight a war? <laughs> Afghanistan is now America's longest war ever. President Trump says he'll send in more soldiers. But this man says that's not the route to victory. I've laid out this plan, this alternative, that comes in at less than 8% of what the Pentagon is spending. Eric Prince founded Blackwater, a mm -hmm. private military contract contractors train people how to shoot accurate respond to dangerous situations this is a promotional film for the contractor that now owns prince's old training ranges the u.s military pays private contractors to do all kinds of things so yeah we already have private military to supplement the public military why not just completely switch over to private provide security deliver mail to remote bases, send them back up to rescue soldiers. The government admits that private contractors do the jobs well, often for half what the military would spend. Mm -hmm. We did a helicopter resupply mission where we embarked our helicopters on board a U.S. military supply ship. And we showed up to do that job with two helicopters and eight people replacing the Navy who was doing it with two helicopters and 35 people. Mm -hmm. Why would the Navy use 35 people? The Admiral that says I need 35 people to do that mission didn't have to pay for them. And when you get a free good, you use a lot more of it. Uh-huh. You see, that's kind of the purpose of prices in the economy is they keep any one person from getting too much of something because they can't afford it. So there's left for other people to buy for other people to get. It's a price ratio. Government not only wastes money, it does things slowly. In Afghanistan right now, a troop in contact, fighting for their lives, can't drop a bomb without a lawyer sitting in Qatar, a thousand plus miles away, to give them permission to drop that bomb. And it's just not a serious way to wage warfare. Uh-huh, okay, so there you have it. There you have it. Dark conservatarian, um, you can get a better private military and a better private police. Less money, higher quality, don't need the government. So the ultimate question that I have for anarcho-capitalists is, what will you do, say that we get this perfect anarcho-society of anarcho-capitalism? Okay, um, it won't be perfect. Nobody ever claimed it'd be perfect. It'd be good, it'd be kick-ass, it'd be the best, but it wouldn't be perfect. Just what I pointed out, because, you know, a big straw man people have against ANCAPs is that they're asking for utopia. Hate that.
Um, there's no government at all. Yeah. What will be the thing that will help us, that will preserve all of our rights? Um, us free people. Okay, well we have private gun ownership plus the private security military I mentioned. Hang on, it's just a damn phone ringing. That's gonna interrupt me right now, right here, right now. Okay, hold on. Say, if we do become anarcho-capitalist. Okay, okay, so as I was saying, we have private gun ownership, we have the private police and private military. That's pretty much our protection we need. And then we also have personal security, such as bodyguards. Or, and anarcho-capitalist society. Sorry, the traffic is getting kind of hectic right here. Um, but say that uh, we do get this perfect anarcho-capitalist society, and everybody is their own person, there's no government at all to get involved, no government to take away your money. Yeah, and that's badass. Via taxation, or any other kind of theft, or- Mm-hmm, damn right, taxation's theft. What not. And the only person who is really protecting you and your right to own your property is yourself and maybe some of your friends. <laughs> oh boy. Well, like I was saying, private. You got your private. You got your private police, personal security, and the private military, and you also got militia groups. But say that everybody is their own free individual, but there is a dictator, uh, a tyrannical warlord from a neighboring land who has organized his own army, has organized his own nation, he rules his own nation and has his own army as well, and say that he wants to take over, that he wants to conquer the free peoples of an anarcho kapistan Alright, here we go say, for example, and, uh, and say that, getting a little hectic there, huh? Sorry, I probably shouldn't do these, uh, vlogs where I'm driving and, uh, talking at the same time, but, I recommend just looking at the road, you don't have to look at the camera to, like, acknowledge your audience, I mean, you're definitely acknowledging your audience, you're talking, you know what to say, I'd say just look straight ahead or something, I don't know, just a tip. But that d tyrannical warlord will want to conquer and Capistan. Say that he wants to do that. Yeah, I'll we'll kick his ass. The ANCAP uh, individuals, they will not be organized enough. That is my concern. What do you mean they won't be organized enough? They're, they're very tactical-minded individuals out there. There are people that can kick ass, you know? There are people who train and... Martial arts, maybe weapon combat, and even armed combat. I say they can find a way to get pretty organized. I mean, that yes, they can defend themselves from the army as individuals. They'll have their own guns and whatnot to defend themselves from the uh, from the army of the tyrannical warlord. But the thing is, is that the tyrannical warlord and his army will be organized. Whereas they'll be fighting against an unorganized nation of free individuals. Oh, that's where the militia is. There's also militias. If you really want to get formal, you can, I mean, if you really want to get together as civvies, you can form a militia and be very organized. I mean, look at Lexington and Concord, you know, American Revolution, they were organized. Um, that worked. Um, also, private military, private police, personal security, yeah. They'll take on this warlord bitch ass. <laughs> and uh, my concern is that one by one, that the tyrannical warlord will just easily pick off every single individual and his little posse of friends that own guns, that they look out for each other. Okay, wait, little posse? Okay, okay, okay. If you worry about numbers, here they are. Largest... Okay. Got that. Typed up last time. Largest militaries. Okay, we got a lot. Okay, the largest armed civilian populace in the world is. Um, hold up. 
Si sama Oke, okay, orang mana? Okay. And we don't know how many gun owners there are in the US, but I heard it was at least a hundred million. So there's a population of about three hundred and twenty million people. At least a hundred million people own guns, so that's like a third, but that's when you do the estimates, that's when you do the estimates, it's a third of um people in America that owns guns, and it happens to be a hundred million. At least. Probably more. So we're addressing civilians, those are how many people own those guns, at least. And here's the largest military in the world. Okay? Let's see what it is. China. China has the largest military. And oh, look, it's only 2,183,000 people. Okay? Um, I guess we could search up how, how many people own guns in the U.S. Rating 10 adults personally own a gun. Okay. There are 393 million firearms. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, one third. Less than one third. I, I doubt that. Percentage of households. Four percent of men. Um, come on, very ten percent households. Okay. Um, but well, that'll be at least a hundred million people. You know, if we get attacked by what? If we get attacked by the largest army in the world, which is China, um, and they have only 200, no, 2 million 800, 2,183,000 people, China only has that, we have over 100 million people, 100 million people, 30, 37%, at least 100 million people out of 320 million people only guns, then we totally outnumber the fucking warlords. And also, um, before anyone says, oh, but they got drones and ships and tanks, and you just got guns. Well, guess what? This is in Kapistan, so we have everything the military has. No gun control, no weapon control. You don't need, like, a license for a destructive device. You know, you don't need any of that shit. You just buy it. Done. So we have what the military has. Well, so as I keep saying, we also have our own private military to have the military weapons. You know, so going to own military weapons, military can own military weapons. Everyone can own military weapons. Except for like who we deem criminals in Afghanistan. You know, I don't think we want to let the bad people of us own guns, at least for the time being. So they won't own guns, but everyone else who doesn't. They own guns, they own military, they own tanks, they own military weapons, the military can own military weapons, so someone can own military weapons. Okay, never have one. It's not like in Ancapistan there will be any armies, any organized armies to fight off the organized army of the tyrannical warlord. Okay, well, you know, keep saying private military, more organized, got the same weapons, yeah. Because there's no government to organize that army. The customers would just pay for the private military and police and security themselves. They are the bosses, they are the organizers of it. But, and uh, this is kind of what I thought of as well, is what about private military? Mm -hmm. uh, a privately owned security force. So say one of the ANCAPIs, they want to set up their own organization where they hire a whole bunch of people as like privately owned soldiers, essentially. The thing is, he can be like that big security force for all the ANCAPs, um, uh. but then uh, he'll obviously want some compensation for protecting those free ANCAP individuals. 
Well, yeah, they're a private military. They're there for a price, just as a public military. Public military is there for a price. Of course, they're gonna ask for money. But we can find, find and done, pay them that money. And remember, it's cheaper. So, you know, either way, you're private. Either way, you're paying for a military. Either way, you're paying for anything. So if I could fucking talk, I'd tell you that, um, that, uh, to pay for things the best way, sorry my tongue trips up a lot, I'm not cursing at you, cursing at my tongue, um, if you do have to pay, to pay for things the best way, do it the free market, do it in Kapistan, you'll pay, you'll buy so much more, so much less. Your money will be worth more, and your prices will be better, and your quality will be higher. That's how you do it. That's how you pay for things that you'd otherwise pay for government for higher prices and lower quality goods and services. All right, let's go. And it seems like the same as taxation. It's not the same thing as taxation because you pay for them via contract, not just theft, not just, oh, you're here, the civilians, we're here, the government, no, it's not that, you sign a contract, you want this private military, you sign a contract for this private military, that's just a normal price, you pay for them, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't say paying for a pizza is taxation, or a computer, or a microphone, or whatever, because you're choosing to buy it, you're buying it, that's the price you pay to buy it. So it's not taxation. Taxation is just here. Here's the bills. Pay them. So, not the same thing. Giving money to the government for them to protect you with the military. Yeah, giving money to the government. You're giving them, and in Pakistan, you're giving it directly to the people you're working with for goods and services who are giving you goods and services for who are trading you the goods and services. Or at least that's how the military is supposed to form. Of course, the military is like abused. Yeah, the military is abused. Military industrial complex and foreign intervention much? Well, when Encapistan's private military, the private militaries of Encapistan, you wouldn't go into other countries for oil or for politics or for alliances or other bullshit for land or, you know, religion even. You know, you just defend your own damn peace. The people you work for, you defend them and no more. So, yeah, no military industrial complex slash foreign intervention there. All the time, but still, it seems that we're back to square one in that situation with a privately owned military. How? You... <sighs> Hold on. Force. Where are all the free and cappies they are paying a sort of a tax, for lack of a better word, to the privately owned military to protect them. It's not a tax if you choose to buy the item. It's a tax if you're just forced to pay for something, even if you don't buy it, even if you don't even want it. I mean, I'm forced to pay for the war on drugs. I don't want the war on drugs, but I'm forced to pay for it anyway, because... Because taxation, because potatoes. But for this private military, I don't have to be forced to pay for it if I don't get it. If I get it, of course I have to pay for it, but if I don't get it, I don't have to pay. Get it, pay. Don't get it, don't pay. It, it's That's how it works. And basically that the owner of that privately owned army becomes the monarchy, becomes the monarch, or the warlord himself, protecting the Ancapis from the other tyrannical dictator. Okay, okay, that, that's not, that's not, oh my god. That's not, what, that's not, gonna, sorry, I can't talk. That's not what is going to happen. Okay, if a private military pulls that shit, they're gonna get gunned down by, by the other private militaries and the civilians that they want to attack. You know, it's best just to protect your own damn 
um, customer and try to go on a conquering spree. Tyrannical warlord or whatever. So yeah, that's my biggest question to anarcho-capitalists. And why I'm not quite convinced... I'm sure it's bad for business, bad PR to just, you know, go on a conquering conquest. ...of the philosophy of anarcho-capitalism. As far as roads goes, uh, people can, like, off-roaders will go up in business. Everybody will be driving an off-road type vehicle. What? Why? Okay, look. Here are how the roads are paid for in Kapistan, which you can definitely use and not have to go off-road with an off-roader if that's what you're asking. The businesses that the roads go through pay for them. They pay for that section of the road that goes through their business and all the businesses paying for their sections of the road make up the whole road, make up the complete road. That's one way to pay for roads. Another way to pay for roads is to ha have billboards, advertising billboards that you see on the side of the roads pay for the roads. Hey, if you want to advertise your business with a billboard at the side of a road, well, you're going to have to pay for that road, okay? That's, one, that's another way to pay for roads. Another way to pay for roads is to have a bill go to your mailbox for you using that road. They bill you directly. Another way to pay for roads is to have people that do commerce on them, you know, semi-trailer trucks moving goods around, they pay for the roads. They're going to drive on it and ship with it, they're paying for it. Also, I heard car companies can pay for roads, so people even have a road for the cars to be driven on in the first place to even want to buy the cars. There's multiple ways to pay for roads. You don't need fucking taxes. There, you have businesses do it. You have the people use roads to do it. It, it. It'll work. Instead, that's the easiest solution that I think to, uh, um, as far as roads go. Well, you don't need to go off road and like abandon roads because they can't be paid for because, as I explained, they can. I mean, that guy T, he did like a long video about how privately owned businesses will uh, will own their own roads and pay like, and have the people driving on the roads pay like a fee, but there's a much easier solution to that, and that is off-roaders. Okay, 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 I, I, I don't know, if, I don't know if that's what guy, I don't know if that's what that guy T said, but my idea was different in that. My idea would be businesses pay for the roads that go for their businesses and be able to have that money, maintain that money to pay for the roads. They charge it in the price that they charge consumers to buy their goods. And combined with the normal price and the price they charge for the roads to offset expenses, that would be cheaper than the regular price and taxation. I guarantee it. So that's my idea. Everybody owns an off-road vehicle of some sorts. Mm. Um, but yeah, I I'm going off on a tangent. And so the biggest reason why I am not convinced of anarcho- Let's look at that guy T. If I, if I want to take a pic. I'm already looking at all these videos and making it really long. But let's, let's look at it anyway. That, okay. That guy T. Roads. Who would build the roads? I guess he's... I love debating opinions and ideas with people who disagree with me. Debate. Okay, I guess he's called Taylor Brown now. Prices. More often than not, they're disappointed. So, before I get into my thesis on how I think... Actually, I think there's a specific reason why people ask libertarians and anarchists who would build the road. Rather than asking us who would build the buildings or cars or houses. It's because when government invades a market... It explanation of how a free society would market alternative to railway construction. There's an empty section of land in the middle of X-Town. Undeveloped, uninhabited, and worst of all, roadless. This land happens to currently be owned by Gold Real Estate, and it's available for purchase. An interested buyer looking to purchase and develop a portion of the land reaches out. In this case, the potential buyer is a company called Blue Corp. So, the two parties, Gold Real Estate and Blue Corp, meet to negotiate terms of purchase. Blue Corp lays out their offer, Gold Real Estate accepts, and the first step of the process is completed. 
Now, right, see, buy land for the road. I'm sure many of you are aware that the state itself doesn't build roads. They contract oh, yeah. the project to a private construction company. In a capitalist market, there is plenty of talented and efficient competition within all industries. Oh, yeah, you can also pay the company that builds the roads to build the roads directly. Construction is no different. You have ICC, KBR, PCL, Turner, Parsons, Bain, and so many more contractors to choose from, large and small. So, Blue Corp has just purchased a portion of land from Gold Real Estate. The overseers of the project hire one of the many construction companies to begin clearing, building, and paving the new road. Once the construction has been completed, safety inspections and pre-trials taken care of, the road is open for business and enthusiastic drivers eventually begin to commute regularly along the fresh asphalt. You've never heard anyone make traffic seem so beautiful, have you? Now, I'm sure some listeners are understandably concerned about how the quality of the construction is. I mean, this is an anarcho-capitalist society, meaning there's no government to enforce safety standards. How do we know if Blue Corp or the construction company cut corners and put driver safety at risk to save a few bucks? There are many answers to this valid question. Between the desire for a positive business reputation for the construction company and approval, okay, here's where it gets so the it's not a barren wasteland like Route 66. There are usually stores, residents, and other establishments that populate the surrounding environment. I believe the funding to upkeep and maintain roads would come from them. So let's return to Blue Corp and their popular new road. A popular business has interest in setting up shop near Blue Corp's Road, looking to capitalize on the large density of passing traffic. The company in question? McDonald's. So, McDonald's negotiates with Gold Real Estate to buy a plot of land. I think that a logical business model could be to charge McDonald's for connecting their business's property to Blue Corp's Road. I mean, the whole purpose of any business to set up shop next to a road is to siphon traffic to their stores and sell products. How would they do that without a driveway connecting their lot to the roadway? I don't know about you guys, but I'm not going to jump the curb just to get to a McDonald's drive through <laughs> Now, the way Blue Corp chooses to charge connecting establishments could vary. They could base it on the length of the asphalt connection, per however many individual connections to the road the company has, the overall size of traffic flow to the establishment, who knows? The specific terms would be determined by Blue Corp and the other party. But whatever the terms, the charge for the road would be added as just another operations expense to whatever business wanted to join their property. This wouldn't be an unreasonable expense considering the recovered tax revenue the companies would now have available to reallocate. Over time, more and more establishments wouldn't be an unreasonable expense considering the recovered tax revenue the companies would now have available to reallocate. Over time, more and more establishments would move to this area. Gas stations, restaurants, grocery stores, shopping plazas, residential mm -hmm. developments, and so on. All of which would be supplying Blue Corp's profits in exchange for the ability to merge with their property. Blue Corp needs the businesses just as much as the businesses need Blue Corp. So, that's one hypothesis on how the rose industry would and could function in a stateless society. And if you think this idea wouldn't be efficient or possible, that's okay. The great thing about a free market is that individuals are free to try and execute whatever ideas. Alright, so there you have it. Capitalism is because I believe that the essential function of government is to protect free individuals from criminals and from overseas tyrannical warlords and dictators and whatnot. So my question to anarcho-capitalists... Okay, well see, that's the thing about government, <clears throat> is it's self-imposed upon people. You don't choose it to protect you. You don't choose it to provide for you. You don't choose it to represent you. It chooses itself. It's self-imposed. You don't ask for those men in suits to rule over you. I mean, sure, there's voting, but that's self-imposed too. It's like, you know, it's like we get to have strangers vote on behalf of strangers for us to step in. You know, I mean, if that's not right. Voting isn't consensual necessarily. Like, if a bunch of people vote to take your house, that's not consensual. They vote, but you don't. You know, you don't. You don't, they imposed their voting and their part on this on you. You didn't ask for permission. You didn't get permission to have them vote on you. So, that's involuntary. Government's involuntary. And as for protecting people's rights, since government's self-imposed, it doesn't inherently protect rights. And as you can see, government today, most certainly, doesn't protect rights. It violates them all the time. With truancy laws, gun control, war on drugs, prostitution, prohibition. Um, government isn't there for protecting rights. You and the free market are. 
So I think that answers that. If we get this anarcho-capitalist society, what will what will stand in the way of tyrannical dictators taking away the rights of the unorganized free and cappies who will not stand hardly a chance against him? Once I said, going back to China once more. Okay, well, going back to the armed civil and populace, 8.8 guns per 100 people. This is from 2012, it's increasing then. Um, gun ownership is at least um, 37%, more than one third of the populace of 320 million people. Uh, US population, uh, 327 million, okay, I'm pretty sure, okay, 37%, so at least 100 million out of those 327.2 million, yeah, 327.2 million. Okay, world's largest military is China, two, just a mere 2 million, 183,000 people, okay. Now I'm pretty sure 100, at least 100 million people is a lot more than 2,183,000 people. Armed people, armed 200, armed 100 million people, and they can get the same weapons the military has. All right, so that's taken care of. Um, so, so that's all I have for this video. See you in the next video. Bye bye. And that's all I have to say for this video. So yeah. I believe that answers your question, the Dark Conservatarian. And yeah, I got my Feldman account logged in right here, but I assure you that I'm an ANCAP cat, and this is done.